through Kickstarter a while back. Um, it recently got delivered to uh, backers. And uh, there's an expansion right now uh, that builds off of this fantastic game um, in Kickstarter right now. And they've like funded like crazy or whatever. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the publishers, the creators of, of Dice Throne uh, were nice enough to contact me and ask me if I wanted a copy of the game so I could take a look at it. And see if it's something I'd like, and ask me if I'd do a review. And so, well, here I am. Uh, so, um, when I, I like I said, it, the game totally flew under my radar. If I had seen the game out there, I would have backed it. Um, basically, because it it uses the tried and true Yahtzee dice mechanism uh, to you know facilitate the actual play of the game. And uh, I've played many different games that use that you know roll the dice, well, Yahtzee. But, I mean, I play many games like that, that um, you roll the dice, you know, select which ones you want to save, roll again, roll again, that sort of, sort of thing. And um, it was a game like that, uh, maybe a little game, you might have heard of it, it was called uh, King of Tokyo. But, but a game like that um, is a staple, uh, it, it's, it's one of my lake cabin games, it's at my lake cabin, and uh, the whole family plays it. But um, it, it, it gave me, like, one of my signature like fantastic gaming moments with my daughter and you know and so she really really enjoys playing that game and and we, we have a lot of fun with it um so when you have that mechanism and you you, you put it in another game i know it's something i'm gonna want i'm gonna be able to play with my family two i'm gonna be able to play with my friends and three my daughter is going to want to play it anytime i ask and i, I really really like it this is a game that after I got it, um, I waited until, you know, whenever my daughter came home from school, um, you know, she'd ask to play it, you know, and, and she and I would play. And then, like, my son, uh, who, who, you know, my daughter's 10 and my son is 6, my son would watch, and, like, he got really interested in how he plays with us, too. And I think that's really fun. And I, the my, my kids have a lot of fun uh, ganging up on Dad and, and beating up you know dad's character but regardless um you know dice throne is it's a really fun game i'm gonna show you how to play it and then i'm gonna come back here and i'm gonna tell you why i enjoy it and why i have fun uh playing it so um here we go so this is dice throne i'm gonna show you how to play in this uh 1v1 two player game now there are other ways you can play this you can play like four players and have a big free-for-all you can have a two versus two team um i played the games that way and they're fun uh, but um, just for the ease of being able to show you how the game is played and how this is, you know, how I played the game mostly uh, in this, like, one one versus one uh, format because I played it against my daughter a lot, uh, I'm just going to show you how uh, the, the mechanisms and the what have you uh, in this manner. Um, each player is going to pick a character. In this case, we have the Barbarian here. I took the Barbarian because he has a beard. Uh, like I have a beard, and this is the Moon Elf, which uh, is the character my daughter played uh, the most. Each player will get a deck of cards that is um, their deck of cards. Each person will have five dice, which will be their dice, uh, and then they'll have this uh, a health marker, uh, your combat point marker, and this little sheet here that'll explain um, any, like, one, it'll explain, uh, like, what each roll is. So, like, if you, you know, if you ever have something that says, you know, change something to a six, it'll tell you what the six is on the, on the card. It'll be this little star in this case. And also, it, you'll get, um, like, you'll have different effects that you can put on the other players. Uh, so, like, you have concussion and stun, and it tells you exactly what happens with those abilities. So, for, like, a concussion, a player afflicted with this token must keep must skip their income phase and then remove this token so income phase allows you to gain more combat points so if you manage to give somebody a concussion uh, they wouldn't get a, any combat points during their income phase in that particular spot 
You also, if you have these abilities to inflict those, you will get tokens uh, that you know that will be yours to use during the game. Um, and like some, obviously, some characters like the Moon Elf here, you know, she can blind, she can entangle, she can be evasive, and she can put targeted. So like she is going to have you know more tokens, and you can see they're all over there. Um, each person in mean, a standard game starts with 50 hit points, and you start with two combat points. Uh, you can, if you have abilities that can heal you, um, you can heal up to 10 higher than your starting health. Uh, so both these players could heal up to 60 if it was possible. Um, you know, this game is very modular. You can definitely monkey with it and do whatever you want. So if you wanted to have a big epic game and have tons of hit points, you definitely could do that. Obviously, the game would last longer if you did that. Um, and also, uh, I'm going to show you how the game is played um, using, like, your combat points and your cards and what have you. Uh, but you can play a, a, a streamlined game where all you're doing is rolling the dice and just, you know, seeing the results and affecting those results. Um, and they, they even suggest that you try that at first, just to kind of learn um, how to do the different, uh, you know, the results and, and do the attacks and, and just, you know, get a feel for the game before you add in the complexity. Now, I didn't do that. Um, you know, I, I played a lot of games and I felt really comfortable in doing that and so did my daughter. Uh, but if, you know, if you did have um, younger uh, kids or, or people that weren't like, uh, big heavy gamers, and you wanted to introduce this game, um, it is it is a fantastic way uh, to do that. I, I, I played this with my parents, uh, you know, and, and, and they enjoyed it. And we didn't use the cards, but they still had a good time. Um, you don't have just these two characters. Uh, I have um, these other boards, you know, so the Shadow Thief, uh, the Paladin, uh, the Pyromancer, and the Monk. And I do like the fact that we have just, like, Monk, right? It isn't, you know, Brother Giuseppes of the Scarlet Moon Temple or something like that. You know, it's just Monk. <laughs> and, and I don't know why I dig that. I mean, I, I, I don't have a problem with um, having you know, uh, like a little backstory and a little flavor text about somebody. But uh, for this game, it just seemed like it, it was better that it was just like, hey, that guy's a monk. There's nothing else about him. We don't need to know, you know, that his, his parents were murdered in front of him when he was five or anything like that. Um, you, you, it's just a monk. All right, anyway, so um, the game is relatively straightforward. Um, if you played any sort of Yahtzee-type game, uh, like Yahtzee or like, you know, King of Tokyo or whatever, um, you're, you're, the dice are going to be used, and they're going to have all these different effects on them. And those effects will uh, cause other things to happen depending upon what your board says. Now, the dice are, you know, the Barbarian's dice. You, the Barbarian's dice are going to be different uh, from the Moon Elf's dice. The Moon Elf's dice are going to be different than the Paladin's dice, and so on and so forth. Uh, depending upon what you roll, um, you'll see, like, you'll have certain effects. So, like, if you roll, uh, you know, some swords, uh, you can deal damage. If you roll some hearts, you can heal. If you can combine things, you can start doing something. So, you, if you had some swords and a, a couple of uh, stars, uh, you can deal four undefendable damage. Most of the time, like, in, everybody's got this little green bar here that tells you what you're able to do as far as how many dice you can roll. So, the Barbarian has thick skin. He's allowed to roll three dice, and he heals, uh, you know, wounds two times the number of hearts that he rolls. Uh, so, you know, like, you know, but if there was an undefendable attack, you know, the person wouldn't be able to get that roll. Um, deal a straight, uh, like a small straight, just like in, in Yahtzee, one, two, three, four is a small straight, um, you know, so that would deal, deal nine damage. Uh, four stars is you can inflict stun and then deal five undefendable damage, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But there is, like, the one big thing, the ultimate ability. Everybody has this, and this is basically when you, if you roll five sixes. Um, if you roll five sixes, um, like, the ultimate ability is inflict stun and deal 15 damage and so you know and like let's just for for sake of just showing you like the moon elf um if you roll uh if you roll all five of these moons um gain evasive inflict blind entangle and targeted then deal 13 damage you know so you know obviously it's it's the big attack right all right
So um, you'll roll dice uh, to begin with. Uh, you know, each person will roll a die, and then that'll determine who goes first. In this case, I got a six to a three, uh, so the barbarian would go first. Um, the only big difference is in the first turn of the game, during the income phase, you get one combat point, and that's you know dealt by just you know increasing this little dial here. Uh, this has a maximum of fifteen. Uh, not that I think anybody's going to get to that, uh, <laughs> but you do have a maximum. But um, on the first turn of the game, uh, you don't get to do, the first player doesn't get to take income, so they're you know they're, they're not going to be able to get up to three. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they can't get more because you can sell cards out of your hand uh, to get combat points, but we'll get to that in just a second. So the first thing you do, and this wouldn't happen obviously in this phase, is that you do an upkeep. So if you had any kind of effect on you, and whenever you get effects on your character, you place them in the middle like that to show that they're affected by that. And depending upon the rules, those will be you get rid of them in, in some manner at some point. Uh, but uh, you do any upkeep that you possibly might have, you know, for your character at that time, and then you do an income. So normally, if this was later in the game, you'd get one income. You'd add one to your combat points over there, and you then go into your main phase where um, you'll be able to uh, play. Uh, like ability upgrades, uh, a main phase action cards, or you can sell cards. Now, I haven't drawn my cards yet, which I should have done already. But you start with four cards in your hand. Let's just take these four cards. And we're going to go ahead and, and check it out. Now, later on, you will be, like, you know, you, you'll be drawing a card every turn. Uh, so, you know, you will be, you know, but... Um, it, it, one of the things I've realized is that each person has 32 cards. And in a normal game, um, normal last, normal length of game, um, you're not going to get through all of your deck, which I think is kind of a cool thing. Because as you play these characters, you're going to learn the different cards, you know, learn different powers and abilities and upgrades and so on and so forth. And you can't always bank on certain cards showing up. So, so what do we have here? So we have, um, so each card is going to have like uh like how many combat points it costs to play that card it's also going to tell you you know what phase you're going to be able to do uh certain cards so the, this card is an upgrade and so it is in a main phase you can see that there's that m there and i'll talk about this card in just a moment here so it's thick skin too which would be like an increase and if you do the increase you play, i'm getting ahead of myself well i'll come back to that so um here we have try try again and you'll notice there's a die that's located right there uh that means that this card is going to be during the roll phase so you or target Target teammate may rule up to two dice, you know, and so uh, that would be for one. Um, bye bye. This little exclamation mark means it's an instant. It means you can play it at any time. So remove one status effect from target player, and then uh, six it. Uh, change the outcome of any one of your dice to a six. All right. So we have a situation where. You know, and, and combat points are very, very important, right? Um, you, you, you obviously, like, having the ability uh, to remove a, a effect and having, like, two combat points available to you so you can use that card at any time, pretty powerful. Um, you know, the, the, the like, the try-try again, be able to change the roll of six, really powerful. You know, and but obviously, you know, you're increasing because normally you're able to you roll three of the... Uh, three dice on your defense but being able to roll four because that's what this would increase it to and then heal it's but on a on two hearts you may also prevent one incoming status effect that's a pretty powerful ability and probably something that we'd want to do and and because once you have an upgrade then it's upgraded right and you know so what you could do during this time is that you could sell one of your cards to your discard pile so you know maybe we're just you know we're gonna say even though this instant effect would be pretty nice to have, you know, we, we're going to have this thing where we could uh, prevent incoming status effects. Maybe we're just going to play, you know, the game a little bit here. We're going to discard that one, and we're going to go ahead and increase, you know, to three. And so now we could then go ahead and spend um, this three to do it. But here's my opinion. Ugh. Being able to re-roll two dice is nice, but being able to change the outcome of one of your dice to a six... Uh, you know, I'm going to keep this one, and I'm going to, like, play the odds here. I'm going to, I'm actually going to discard two, because I want to be able to have four, and I'm going to go ahead and increase that like so, and I'm going to play this to, you know, and, and that's going to take my combat points back down to one, but I'm going to have this card in my hand. It's possibly going to go ahead and increase one of my dies, my die rolls to a, a six, to a star. So it's very possible I could have a really, really good first turn. 
So let's just see here. So standard uh, Yahtzee rolls are in place. You're going to roll all five of your dice. And then um, we're going to, uh, uh, you know, like pick which dice we want to keep and then re-roll uh, some of them. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing again until we finally, after we've done three rolls, we're going to have our ultimate effect. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll. And so let's see what we got here. So we got some hearts. We got these three attacks. Uh, you know, and that's good, right? We, you know, we, we have those three attacks. Um, you know, I was hoping maybe we could get a small straight, but we don't have that. We only have a one, two, four. I guess we could get a three in there somewhere. Um, you know, man, I really wanted some stars. I didn't get any stars at all. Uh, that is extremely unfortunate. But, oh well, we'll, we'll let's, let's just, uh, oh, I, I moved that by accident. Let's, let's, let's just see what we got here. Um, we could go for a, you know, let's just go for the straight. You know, because... You know, that's nine damage, and, and, and you know, we can always fall back on the fact that, you know, uh, maybe we can chain... If we get a star, and we keep these we keep uh, these two these two swords, then we could get the deal for undefendable damage. So let's go ahead. We're going to re-roll this and re-roll this. So we're looking for uh, a three and a five, if we can somehow get that. So let's see what we can get. Uh, okay, well, we, now we got our two stars. Um, <laughs> all right, so, man, oh, man, oh, man. So, I'm going to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these two, because right now that means I'm going to have the Sturdy Blow, which deals four undefendable damage, which means that the player, the, the, the player that's running the Moon Elf isn't able to go ahead and roll their defense dice. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this again, and if I can somehow manage to get lucky and get a six... I could use this card to, you know, change it, and I'd be able to do five undefendable damage and inflict a stun. So let's see if I get a six. Six! Ah, four. All right, so I didn't get, I didn't, the roll didn't happen like I wanted to, but that's okay. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to take these, like so, and we're going to do four undefendable damage uh, to the Moon Elf. And so the Moon Elf player, which would, you know, probably be my daughter, uh, she would she would have to take this. And she would reduce it down to 46, like so. All right. So I haven't even looked. I'm gonna let's let's just draw the, the four cards for my daughter, and I'm gonna put those over here. So um, since it's undefendable, she doesn't get to roll. Um, you know her the defensive roll dice, which is five. And I'll just show you her ability. And let's just let's just roll it, and so you can kind of see how that works. And so uh, defense roll is five on on two feet. It'll prevent. Uh, half of the damage and round up, and then for every two bow, um, you get to deal one damage. So even when you're defending, you could do. Just, let's just let's just say it wasn't undefendable for whatever reason. Let's just see what. See, so roll these. Let's see what we get here. So, wow, she'd get a really good roll. Uh, my daughter would. She'd have two feet and two of those. So she'd actually do a point of damage to me. And she could, you know, have the damage that she took. Now, obviously, she doesn't get to do that because of the fact that, you know, the attack was undefendable. But, you know, it's kind of cool how that works, right? All right. So, um, the other thing is, is that after you do the roll phase, there is another, like, second main phase. Which means that, like, now if, like, you can react, if you had cards in your hand that you'd want to play after the attack or whatever... You could do that at that time to kind of affect everything. We don't have anything like that, and so we're not going to take advantage of that that situation. Uh, but you know, you know, you do have another action phase. Um, then, if then at this point, if you uh, like, if you have uh, more than six cards in your hand at this point, um, you would have to discard down to six, and then you would go ahead and uh, like turn over to the other player, and they'd get to go. All right, so uh, my daughter, playing the Moon Elf, wouldn't have anything to do in the upkeep phase. She has her four cards. Um, during She gets to do her income phase, so she's going to go ahead and increase her combat to three. And during the income phase is also uh, when you draw a card. I didn't get to draw one because I had to skip mine as being the first player. Let's just see what she got here. Um, well, she got 
uh, an upgrade. Well, she got two upgrades. Holy cow, she got the Longbow 3. Oh, this is actually uh, important. Um, so, you notice how this is uh, Longbow 3, not Longbow 2. You don't have to get long the second one uh, to go to the next one. You do have to, um, but if so, you have to just pay the difference between, um, like, this one would, the Longbow 2, I believe, costs two, two power, or two combat points. So, you just pay the difference between the two if you went from two to three. But in this case, if you wanted to go to three, you'd have to pay the full three combat points. Um, so she got Tippet, increase her by one. That's a good one. Um, and then, because notice how it's an instant. And so you could do that at any time. So that includes when somebody is going through and doing their roll phase and attacking you. I, I should have been looking at that so she could have messed with what, what I did. But regardless, um, you know, so you can actually uh, change what other people are rolling as far as their dice are. And then uh, notice this one's zero, better D, target player may re-roll one or more dice during the defensive roll phase. Another really good one. And then take that, another, another zero CP. Then that's some, I think one of my reasons why my daughter really liked this one. Anyway, uh, play only after attacking opponent roll one die on a, a bow, add your damage on a foot, inflict and tangle. And on a moon, you inflict blind, which is, you know, really cool as well. So anyway, um, I know my daughter, uh, <laughs> if she was playing, she'd spend all of her combat points. And she never gets rid of cards unless she has to. And she would go ahead and upgrade her her longbow uh, to longbow three. Um, easily, that's what she would do. And then, um, that would be her main phase, and then she'd go to her roll phase. And let's just do this quickly and see what we get. Uh, and my, my, also I know my daughter, she always would go, um, for the most damage, uh, she possibly could do. Um, so, uh, and, and, and here's a cool, here, let me just show you the long row three. So, like, notice all the bows, and then if you have three of a kind, as far as the numbers, you get to inflict and tangle. Um, and Entangle is kind of a jerk ability. Let's just look at that real quick. Um, so Entangle, a player afflicted with this token gets one fewer roll attempts during their next offensive roll phase. So you don't get to re-roll twice, which you know, stinks, obviously. So, um, annoying my daughter, she would keep these two and she'd re-roll these three. And now she'd just be looking for um, as many uh, bows as she possibly could. And she would get, oh, wow, <laughs> she got all five. And she'd say, I'm going to stop, Dad. And she'd do nine damage to me, and she'd inflict and tangle. But, so now she's done. Now I get to roll my defense because I have thick skin. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to get to roll four of these. And remember, if I can get two hearts, I can prevent that entangle from showing up. Let's see what I got here. I got them. I got my two hearts. So she would be doing... 9 damage, normally would inflict an entangle, but because I can prevent one incoming status effect, I'll stop that. And then uh, I would heal two times the wounds, the hearts. Uh, so I would take 9, but because I rolled two hearts, I'm going to heal four of those 9. So I as well am going, I'm going to take 5. So, you know, she technically, I, I forgot I did 4 to her. So I would go down to 45 for my health but let me let me just see did she have oh so um i you know and she'd play this as far as that goes and let's see she's gonna roll one die and then let's see what she gets so if she gets a moon she gets inflict blind and then on a foot inflict entangle so i'd have to get that so if she gets any of these uh it's gonna affect me so let's see what we get here so a foot i'm gonna get the entangle anyway because of the fact that she played that on her roll phase. So basically she had two entangles coming in. I prevented one from showing up. Which is good because with two entangles I would have been able to just roll once. Now at least I'll get one re-roll on my next turn. So she'd have another main phase but she doesn't have any other combat points to spend. So she'd be okay as far as that goes. And then I would go on my turn and we kind of be now start going back and forth and back and forth. The best thing about this is that it's all very intuitive, um, you know, and, and you, and admittedly, um, these may be some of the more simple uh, players to play, but you still feel like you're making good choices. You still feel like you're having fun and you're, you're pulling off different powers. And as you get into the more uh, complex, uh, you know, characters, like the Paladin, you know, or, or the Shadow Thief, um, you really start to feel like, uh, like the... 
you know, I, I, I'm not going to say it's complex, because I, I still think the game is pretty straightforward. But you definitely get to that point where it isn't just a, a Basham game, and you're getting some meat on the bone with some fun decisions and some exciting uh, things going on between the two, the, the, you know, between the battles and what have you. And plus, when you have team battles, um, you have situations there where, you know, the two different, uh, the people on the teams can complement each other and, and, you know, and, and can kind of, um, you know, uh, you know, take certain actions uh, to to buff the the people on their team, and and you know, and to you know, make it feel you know like it really is a lot of you know, like there's a lot of the team games that I played that it just kind of feels like oh well we're just you know it's 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 just another person that's fighting right um, and you know but this one actually made it feel like a team it made it feel like you were integral and part of a group working together which is something I really liked but. Let me talk about that and a whole bunch of other stuff uh, in my final thoughts. All right, thank you uh, very much for learning how to play. Uh, you know, like, the game isn't difficult uh, to learn by any means. It isn't difficult to teach, especially if you've played games with the basic mechanism. And there's a lot of things about it that actually exist in other games, and other, like, you know, battling card games or what have you. That whole, oh, you know, here's your upkeep phase, here's your draw phase, here's your attack time, and then there's your second draw phase or your second, you know, you know buffing phase or action phase or whatever. It's, it's a very tried and true method uh, and, 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 you know, process that, that many, many games go through. And, and um, you know, so I guess, you know, like the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing, right? Anyway, so, but regardless, um, the reasons why I like this game, I kind of already said, but if you didn't watch how the game was played, um, you know, it's, it facilitates... Um, like a couple things that I really, really like. I, I, I like the, 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 the Yahtzee mechanism. I've always, I've always enjoyed that because there's something, one, about the sound of rolling dice, but two, the dice rolling, um, it's, it's an expectation moment. It is a, it is a, it is a moment where everybody is watching. Everybody is looking in. Everybody is seeing what's going on and, and seeing what's going to happen. Um, and, and there's too many games out there, you know, games that I still enjoy playing a great deal, but there's too many games out there that, unfortunately, um, you know, when it isn't your turn, you, you don't really have anything to watch. You don't have anything to care about, right? Um, you know, you're just kind of waiting until somebody says, oh, hey, you're up. And then, at that point, then you will, you know, start to, you know, like, you know, do your little thing, right? But I've noticed when I'm playing games like that and I'm doing my own little thing... Um, I look at the other part of the table and, you know, they're on their phone or they're talking or maybe they're watching TV or maybe they're, you know, stacking their wooden cubes in a pile, you know, and they're just, you know, and it's, it's not a bad time, but it's just like, I don't feel like everybody's really invested in the moment. And I do, and I like that. Um, there's been so many times when I played games like this and played games of, of, of Dice Throne where, you know, it's come down to, you know... I'm playing with my two kids and it comes down to that last big final roll as to whether or not, you know, I'm going to be out, right? I've got to like come up with a really good roll on defense to, to save myself or, or I, you know, I'm going to get knocked out next turn. Uh, but you know, if I can just get one really, really amazing roll right here, uh, then I can pull out the win, that thing. And everybody's then is zeroed in on the dice, and they're watching it, and then everybody is applauding or cheering or, you know, like, going, ah, oh, dang it, you know, that sort of thing. And um, and I like that. I like that that drama, if you will. And it, it you know, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, puts a little signature moment uh, on, on gaming night uh, that, I, that I really, really enjoy. Now, it doesn't hurt. Like I said, the game is really easy to play. It's really straightforward. Um, if you have, like, non-gaming friends that you want to introduce to or, or children that are younger, uh, that, that may be, um, maybe, like, the whole cards and everything, the, the added strategy to it, uh, you know, might not be something that they'd be interested in or, or be willing to undertake, you can play a very, very straightforward game. And it's still a lot of fun. I mean, you know, it's just there's something about rolling the dice. There's something about... The noise of the dice, you know, hitting the table. And, like, there, I, I even wanted to look right there. You know, I wanted to see what I rolled. You know, oh, good. Uh, but, you know, and 
and it's still, like I said, it's it's still a fun game that you're going to be able to have, you know, every, like and and be able to entertain yourself and the other people at the table, um, you know, even if it isn't, you know, big hardcore gaming night, if you will. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I love the theme. Uh, I love the art. I love the fact that there is an expansion coming because, you know, I, I want more stuff for this, right? I want more characters. I want more cards. I want more things that I can do. And, and, I, and when you have a game like this that has that wonderful mechanism foundation, you know, it's just, it's the, the designer's eye in the sky or, or I, whatever you want to call it that they can just sit there and, like, think, what else do we want to put into this? What other type? What 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 classic fantasy archetypes do we want to put into this? Like, let's make a necromancer, you know. Let's let's you know make a a shapeshifter. Let let's let's make a a bounty hunter, you know. Like you, know, I can think of like I could probably sit here and think of a a couple of dozen if you gave me enough time. And and I and just the fact that I I know that this game is gonna you know move forward and perpetuate forward, and there's gonna be more and more stuff involved in this. That just means I'm going to have more and more classic confrontations, more and more like classic uh, like teams that are going to come together, and and just uh, it's it's going to revitalize the game and keep it interesting, keep me invigorated. And it's going to be on my shelf for a long, long time. So there you go. That is uh, Dice Throne. If you have any questions about it, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I am the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you. Have yourself one heck of an awesome day.